want to show your reader how important something is, one elaboration move is to use numbers. Today you'll work on adding numbers, statistics, and dates to your writing. Writers make this move when they want to add a stronger sense of validity to their writing. Whether we realize it or not, people tend to view data as factual and accurate. Of course, it's important to use data from reliable sources and to represent it accurately. Statistics can be easily manipulated. Mark Twain famously said, there are three kinds of lies, lies, damned lies, and statistics. But when you use statistics accurately, they can add a lot of weight to your argument. I've written an informational paragraph on the negative health effects of smoking. Pause the video a minute to read it. I've used resources from a site that I believe is reliable, the Centers for Disease Control, or CDC. The CDC is part of the executive branch of the United States government. Its purpose is to collect, study, and disseminate accurate information about disease and health in the United States. I've got two powerful quotes from them here. But the paragraph is, blah, you've heard this before. The information just doesn't sink in. There's nothing like some numbers to show how bad smoking is for you. A quick trip to the Centers for Disease Control's website gives me a wealth of statistics. I found this page by Googling health effects of smoking statistics, but you could type in your disease type like cancer statistics or whatever condition you're looking at, diabetes statistics. You might find information from the CDC. You also might find specialty organizations for that condition or disease, which also collect accurate information and would be reliable sources. The first place I need some evidence is about the increased risk of lung cancer. I've made that claim, but I haven't supported it with any evidence. There were two related facts on the CDC page that stood out to me. I've just stacked them up here. That's not really effective. But just to see what the options are, I could say, according to the CDC, a smoker's lung cancer risk is 25 times greater than a non-smoker's. Wow, that really brings to life the increased risk. I could also say that 90% of lung cancers are caused by smoking. Those were both facts I found on the CDC page. Isn't that more vivid? Next, I need to deal with the increased risk of heart disease. I don't have any evidence in terms of numbers to support that, but the CDC provides some. Smokers are two to four times more likely to develop coronary heart disease. That's not quite as impressive as 25 times greater like lung cancer, but it's still an important health risk. These two facts really help you understand the significance of the health risks. Finally, I have my quote from the CDC that cigarette smoking is the leading preventable cause of death in the United States. That's a fact, but I really don't have a sense of how that fits in the overall scheme of deaths. If I add that nearly one in five deaths in the US each year is attributed to smoking, that gives me a much more concrete picture. It really supports my final um, clincher sentence that there's just no question that cigarettes kill. Now, in a lot of ways, this isn't a great paragraph structure. I didn't analyze or explain any of these quotes. I really just plunked them in and kind of stacked them up. But I hope that you're seeing that when I use numbers or statistics or percentages, that it really helps make the information more concrete and more convincing. Remember that you can use raw numbers or ratios or percents to express data. If you tell me that 480,000 people die of smoking per year, I'm thinking, that sounds like a lot, but is it really? How many people is this compared to all the deaths? So the CDC also says that this is one in five deaths per year in the US. On my own, using my math skills, I could paraphrase this or restate it as a percent because one in five is equal to 20%. Remember, when you're using statistics from a website, you need to paraphrase or quote exactly. Finally, notice that oftentimes the numbers are qualified with an adverb, such as nearly, about, approximately, up to, and almost. Pay attention to these details because you want to be accurate, particularly if you have rounded up or rounded down the numbers when doing calculations to change them. For example, from a raw number to a percent or ratio. 
Also, remember that you need to convince your reader that your numbers are credible, so always tell them where your statistics or numbers are from. Using a few well-chosen numbers can help your reader accept your claim and make your argument feel more complete and convincing. Good luck.